Hey, two quick things before we start this video. People have told me that when I did the monthly gig haul at the start of January, that, that the fact that the image was mirrored for aesthetic reason was uh, kind of weird when they tried to read the actual item that I was holding. So I mirrored it back. How does this look? Is it weird? You tell me in the comment section down below. And second, I just got out of the dentist, so excuse me if during this video I muffled my words more than I usually do. And with that out of the way, let's talk about OPL6. Hello everyone and welcome to Anything Geek, my name is Zero and we've already talked about this set in the past, but we've only touched upon a couple things, mainly the secret rares and manga rares, which are awesome by the way, you should definitely check those out, it's gonna be recommended in the cards over here, but I wanted to talk a bit more about all the other cards that are coming in the set, but I felt like the video that I made for OPO5 breaking down all the colors were a bit too much, so today I want to try and just focus on on whatever I feel is interesting in this set. Just to give you guys a bit of a heads up for when OPO6 comes out. And so let's just start with all the leaders. The first leader we're gonna have is another Uta. The first one that we have was the promo one which was given with the promotion of Film Red. And it's a film type leader which is very important for all the red cards that are in this set. Given all the other leaders that we have, I think it's a, it falls a bit short. Hody is very interesting though because part of his effect is that you need to take one of your life, but every card with the new Fishman Pirate that you can use with this leader actually prevents you from doing that. Of course, there's also an alternate art leader, which I find it less interesting than the other one. Perona is one of my favorites, actually. It's a green-black leader and she's got a choice effect, but really if I just follow my instinct I would go with the first one where I could rest the opponent's board and make some damage and prevent my opponent from using his board and the alt is also gorgeous and I like that card and I know that god pack is already a thing in OPL6 so I wish I will pull one but We'll see when I get my boxes. Yamato is perhaps the most interesting leader to me in OPO6. She's got double attack and an activate main that if your opponent has three or less life cards, you can give up to two rested dawn cards to one of your characters. So massive powers for Yamato and the deck that she's gonna run. And basically green has a very fantastic rest engine and rest mechanics, which pairs with the yellow side that is kind of infinite life. Looks very interesting. And double attack on the leader is you, you have to block every attacks of this leader otherwise you're gonna take two damage and the art of court for for the alternate is absolutely beautiful reiju is also a leader that i'm interested in but less than yamato for instance she's a blue purple and she's basically made to play with the jamma double six uh, type that is coming in opl6 for the purple color and her effect as a leader is just a draw power which is very cool and she doesn't need really to do anything else because the main power of her deck is gonna come from your board and from the Jammer double six i already made a video also about all the Jammer double six you can check it out in the cards above in the video it's a very solid type and the alternate art is of course gorgeous as well and moria is also at the same as yamato for me is one of the most interesting cards that i want to play also because i like the character and his design overall and his mechanics is more based on the trash so you get to trash one from your hands and two from your deck but then you get to play one trailer box uh, character with a cost of four or less from your trash alternate art you know every leader is gonna get one this one is very cool I feel so maybe that's just me maybe maybe that's my preference but my favorite so far is yeah uh, Actually, I'm, I'm gonna phrase it otherwise. The only one I'm not particularly a big fan is Hardy Jones. Every other leader, uh, alternate art, I feel is very well done, but it's just not my type. But now let's talk a bit about the character, and I'm not gonna talk about the special just yet. I'm gonna keep that for the end of the video. Red is gonna be mostly about films. You're gonna have a lot of support in, uh, in the film type, whether it's the event or the characters, and 
And the exception that I will note is, of course, Shanks, which uh, which has a very interesting effect, which is a non-play. You can kill up to one of your opponent's character with 10k power or less. So whatever your opponent has just played on the board that is a big card, you can remove it pretty much. And uh, not to mention that uh, this has an alternate art from Akira Egawa. And of course, I've talked about it as well in a previous video, so feel free to check it out. Another mention that I have is for Shuraya, which has a very interesting mechanic. It's a blocker, and when attacking an unblock once per turn, this character becomes the same power as your opponent's leader until the start of your next turn. It's kind of perfect to mitigate the white beard that you might face or the red purple luffy which is a 6k leader as well and some leaders tend to keep their power in between turn so that's also something that you can mitigate as well using shiraya and uh, i haven't seen the the film where this is from but i think that the alternate art is actually very cool one mention that i have also in the film type is that this douglas bullet can only go with the uta leader because your leader has to be a film type for this character to gain blocker so you can play this only with two leaders to really get the full extent of it either you play it with um the uta that we just talked about which is the red purple uta from obo6 or you play this with the red uta from the promotional deck Tot Musica looks very interesting and promising as well. Activate main once per turn, you may rest one of your Uta cards. These cards gain plus 5k power during this turn. That's, that's insane. You get 11k just for resting an Uta. And we have some low cost Uta that you can use for that as long as they don't get removed from the board. Or maybe you play another one, but just by forfeiting the attack of that Uta, you can get... a. Uh, an 11k attack on a 6k base power that's that's very cool to me that's very interesting of course with all that film type that we have we need a searcher and the new monkey d luffy is actually that searcher on play you can look at three cards from the top of your deck reveal up to one film type card and add it to your hand then place the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order classical searcher also has a trigger that you can activate these cards on play effect that's a good searcher for the film type if you want to build uta that's definitely a card that you need in your deck because you're gonna be playing around with the film type like i said uh uta is uh is only film and you can have the Douglas bullet in that deck as well and as the event we have the brew dragon sea water stream that is very interesting because it's actually a kind of nerfed gum gum jet pistol it's a three cost versus the four cost of jet pistol i believe and you can kill a character with 5k power or less gum gum jet pistol targets a 6k and they both have a trigger that does kind of the same because you take the base power and you reduce it by a thousand so the trigger from gum gum jet pistol is gonna target a 5k this targets only a 4k so it's really a just one down of gum gum jet pistol but this is for the film and straw hat crew so this if you want is if you like gum gum jet pistol in your straw hat deck you can have this cards and gum gum jet pistol as bold removal very aggressive from the triggers very aggressive when you play them just as the the pure effect but this one can be used in the film deck but now let's talk a bit about the green color which got a very interesting support with the fishmen which are all over the place of course with holy jones being the new green leader that we have for that they needed to have support but some cards actually have uh, the east blue type and one of them that i found very interesting is arlong and this could put potentially give better support to Kuro and Arlong from OPO3. The effect is a non-play. You may trash one card from your hand and up to one of your opponent's rested leader cannot attack until the end of your opponent's next turn. And also has a trigger. You can rest up to one of your opponent's character with a cost of four or less. So whether you get this from your triggers or 
just play this as is. You get value from this in a Kuro or an Arlong deck from OPO3, which is very cool and very interesting because you get the East Blue types on some of those, and those haven't been really used aside from those two leaders in the past. Now, I'm going to make a group chat with all the new Fishman Pirates, starting with Icaros, and we also have Zeo, we have Daruma, we have uh, also Dosun, and I believe uh, Hamon doesn't have it, this, but you also, also, also have this. They all have their base effect, but then you get to add one card from the top of your life to your hands. And the thing about this is you need to play this with Hody Jones. Because Hody, you cannot add life cards to your hands using your own effect during this turn. So you can totally negate this part of the effect. We also have this on the how the SR and you can negate this part of the effect by using the Holy Jones leaders. And so all those new Fishman pirates, you need to play with Holy Jones because then you, you get to not take one of your life each turn, which makes sense because Holy took the pill and, and, and now he's losing his vitality. And that's just it. Kami is also an interesting one because she's actually the searcher for the Fishman and Merfolk. So you have an on play, you can look at the four cards from the top of your deck and reveal up to one Fishman or Merfolk folk type cards other than Kami and add it to your hand then place the rest at the bottom of your deck. She's also got a, a counter of a thousand, no trigger, uh, that's too bad but she's still useful and she's also got a cool alternate art so yeah that's cool. Van der Decken is also a very interesting card, it's a fishman and flying pirate, we don't have any flying pirates as well but we have some fishmen and his effect is a non-play that you may trash a fishman from your hands or one the Ark Noah, which we get to in a second. And you can trash this from your hands or your field. And the effect that you get is that you can KO one your, of your opponent's rested character. So you pair this with a rest engine. Quite frankly, you can KO anything on the board. Now, the Hody uh, SR I touched briefly about because we have that uh, get one life in your hands uh, thing that you can mitigate with your leader. But this also has the rush effect. So you can rush in green now with that Hody. And not only that, but his own play is actually that you can rest to a total of two of your opponent's character or done cards. So you can choose to literally prevent him from defending using his dance or maybe you can like rest his balls and be more aggressive and control the board with the rush that you get which is an 8k so that's that's very not negligible he's also got a parallel art which i'm not that big of a fan but if you like it there you have it. And the last card that we're going to talk about for green is going to be the Ark Noah, which I mentioned when we talked about Van der Decken, because you can trash this from your hands or your field to activate DKO from Van der Decken. Noah has a trigger that you can play this card, so even if you get this from your life, you can just play this. And has an on-play that you can rest all of your opponent's character. It's that good. You can rest the entire opponent's board, KO using all your effect. And if you get this from your trigger, and this is the first attack that your opponent is doing, then you can rest the entire board of your opponent. Personally, I like this event. And let's move on to the blue cards. But uh, hey, before we do that, maybe consider subscribing to the channel and leaving a like. I don't talk just about the One Piece card game, but if you plan to follow that game, that's something that I'm gonna cover front to back. So if you want to keep up with the news about this game, or you're interested in basically anything geek, then you're in the right place. And for blue, despite having a Jammer double six leader, we know that the support is mostly gonna be for the Navy. We also get a young Kuzan, which is actually perfect for card cycling in the Navy type, because you can draw two cards and place two cards from your hands at the bottom of your deck in any order. And as we know, draw power is very important in this game. So if you can cycle your cards, that's all the better. Another card that piqued my interest is also Pudding. Uh, it's a big mom pirate in blue and I don't think that we have other big mom in blue so correct me if I'm wrong but she has an on play effect that is kind of a double-edged sword to me because you your opponents return all cards in their hands to their deck 
and shuffle their deck. And then your opponents draw five cards. So you need to be like very careful playing this because you might potentially give your opponents more cards than they had, but you can completely change what they were about to do because now they have to redraw a hand and maybe they don't have what they need to make the play that they wanted to do originally. So double-edged swords, Tell me what you think about her in the comment section down below. Tashigi is also very interesting because it, she's the navy searcher for blue. And since we had Sakazuki, that uh, blue-black leader, and navy are mainly blue and black now, that means that you can have two searchers for Sakazuki decks. That doesn't look good for the future of the game. And she's also got an alternate art. Very cool. Tsuru is one of the 2k counters of the navy in blue. And she's very cool, but she's a bit expensive. Yet she has a very interesting on-play effect that you may trash two cards from your hands and your opponents return one of their character to the owner's hand. And this doesn't have, like, restriction. So any character, you trash two cards from your hands, you return one of them. So... That's very strong, especially because she's only costing 5. It's almost kind of like a red rock, but not to the bottom of the deck, but to the hand. And like I said, the 2k counter on this card is just a cherry on the top, because you can use this defensively as well. Garp is also one of the cards that I got my eyes on, because it's a Donex 2 when attacking if you have 4 or less cards in your hands, your opponents cannot activate blocker during this battle. So bypassing the blocker is going to be a very good thing. You just have to make sure that you control your hands and the amount of cards that you have better than what you do normally. Don't get too much cards in your hands. And as far as events goes, we have the Gravity Blade Raging Tiger, which is very, very interesting. It's a 7 cost, so that's very expensive, but that's mad worth it, because it's the main effect. You can place up to two characters with a cost of six or less at the bottom of the owner's deck in any order. So that's already a heavy removal, but you also get a trigger that you can place up to one character with a cost of five or less at the bottom of the owner's deck. So whether you get this from a trigger or you play this as the main effect, you get some removal. And I'm going to again go with the analogy of Red Rock, because Red Rock is also a very expensive card, but you get to bottom deck something and this does it as well on six costs or less and you get to target two cards with this so we know red rock is very useful i think there's going to be space for this as well and we finally get to purple cards which is going to be mainly germa double six like i said before so we are going to have all the g's i'm going to call them g's okay yanji sanji ichiji they're G's, okay? So the way that they're gonna work is they're gonna be a small version of each of the brothers and sisters, and there's gonna be a, v a big version of all the brothers and sisters. And then you're gonna have Judge, which is the father, okay? So first you're gonna play the low cost of the brothers and sisters. Uh, so that's the four cost Ichiji's, uh, the three cost Niji, the two cost Yonji's, and the two cost Reiju. You're gonna play those, and they're gonna allow you to play their bigger version for free basically you get to trash that card and you play the other one for free and once you have those you can play judge that is gonna necro the the small version of the g's okay and then you can just replay them so you have big rush with heg which also has a very cool alternate art by the way so you have rush with heg you have ko and rest with uh niji you have blocker wall of defense with yonji and you have draw power with reiju and all of those can be recycled through Judge's effect, because down minus one, you may trash two cards from your hand, play up to four Gemma double six type character with different cards name and 4k power or less from your trash. And you also get to rest one of your opponent's done cards if you do so choose. But Judge is here to solely get back from the trash the small version of the brothers and sisters, which then in turn can help you play their bigger version. We also got Sora in the mix, which is their mother, and she's basically a necro to get back some of your Yonji, Niji, Ichiji from the trash and also has a 2k counter. So 
that's very cool. The other mention I have for this deck is actually Zephyr, which has a very interesting effect. It's a down minus one on play. You can negate the effect of up to one of your opponent's character during this turn. And then if that character has 5k power or less, you can KO it. So that's very cool. That's a bold removal, but even if you don't get the board removal, you still get to negate the effect of an opponent's cards. And that's, that's kind of interesting. I don't know if it's going to be useful, but it is definitely interesting. And if we take a look at the event of Jammer Double Seek, we have Black Bug, which is a board removal that targets a five costs or less, or if you get from the trigger, that's a four or less. We also get a searcher in the event Jammer Double Six, so you can look at the five card, look for Jerma, and add it to your hand, and then place the rest at the bottom of your deck. And also, if you get this from a trigger, you get to draw a card. That's very good in my book. Also, it just costs one, so doesn't hurt to play this in your deck. And the stage of Kingdom of Jerma is actually also a searcher with a bit of a twist that you have to trash one card in order to activate the search effect. And we are to black now with the Moria and Perona leader. And of course, it's going to be mainly focused on the Trilobac pirate. Absalom, which uh, got actually an alternate art, uh, is going to be a card that's going to be able to necro your cards from your trash, as well as KO something on the board in the process. Inupe is also a very interesting card because on playing on KO, you can draw two cards and trash two cards from your hand. So, so you got an easy card cycling with that. Ours is actually one of the most interesting cards to me because it cannot attack, uh, but once you activate main, you may kill one of your own trailer back pirates, and this character's effect is negated during this turn. So you cannot attack unless you kill something on your board, and I like this very much, considering that uh, most effects, especially Moya and Absalom, uh, are going to be based on removing cards from your trash, putting them back either in your hands or play them from your trash or getting them back in the deck. I don't mind KOing something on my board just so Oz can attack. We got Kumachi also, which is interesting. It's a down next to during your turn, this character gain a thousand power for every five cards in your trash. So the more you get cards in your trash, the more these cards gain power. It kind of reminds me a bit of Smiley back in OP01, uh, where the more cards you had in your hand, the more Smiley would have power. Also, we of course get uh, Moria as an SR and both cards are actually gorgeous. Uh, and his effect is you can choose up to one character with a cost of four or less and up to one character card with a cost of two or less from your trash. And then you get to play those two cards, one of them rested, the other one active. I really like this effect and the design of the cards overall. And I think this pairs so well with the leader and the deck that they're trying to, to orient this with, which is the necro from the trash. It's very cool. I like this very much. Hogback is a bit more targeted when you get something from your trash because you can return two cards from your trash to the bottom of your deck in any order and you can add up to one trailer bike pirate type cards other than hogback from your trash to your hand and this doesn't specify cost or restriction you so you can totally get your moria back from the trash using hogback sindri is gonna be the 2k counter for the trailer back and also has the necro effect that you get to trash from the top of your deck which you can then in turn get back using some others effect that we've already talked about Starting the event with the Shadows Asgard, we have a main effect that your leader gain plus a thousand power, then you may kill any number of your own trailer back pirate type character with a cost of two or less. And if you do that, your leader gains an additional plus 1k power during this turn for every character KO'd. And it's a main encounter, so you can either use this defensively or offensively during your turn. You also get a trigger that you can draw two cards and trash one from your hand. So you get some card cycling as well as draw power, which is very cool. And I think that this might have a space 
in this deck. Then we have the infamous nothing happened, nothing at all cards uh, from Zoro during Trailer Park. And uh, already there's a trigger, you can activate this card's counter effect. So if you get this from your life, perfect, you can still activate this. The counter is actually, you might had you may had one card from the top of your life cards to your hand, and your character with a cost of seven or less cannot be KO in battle during this turn. So if you feel that at some point, one of your big character on the board is gonna get targeted, you can definitely trigger this or use this as a simple counter to prevent that bold removal from happening. We also have negative hollow, which is a very simple main trash one comes from your opponent's hand. And this is a hand killer as well. Uh, this might be very useful to prevent your opponent from defending when you're at that very late game and you need to push like just a tiny bit just to get that little victory. Also get a trigger, activate this card's main effect. That's all good. That's very all good. And we also, of course, have the Trail Back stage for the Trail Back Pirates. It's an activate main that costs one, and you may raise this stage if your leader has the Trail Back Pirate type. You can play up to one Trail Back Pirate with a cost of two or less from your trash rested. So that's a free play. Well, not very free because you get because you have to pay one for this, but you get to play a two cost from your trash uh, for a cost of one, and that means that you can actually go back and play one of the low cost that you have over here, either Sindri, Tarlan, Inupe for card cycling, Kumachi. You can play all those from your trash rested for a cost of one. So I think definitely with the archetype, this is gonna be cool as well. And we finally made it to yellow with actually a lot of 1-0 and Sky Island support. So bear in mind that yellow we get that Yamato with double attack which is already very interesting and it's just gonna be better from here on out. First off we have Apis that's gonna add some more Sky Island uh, support with a 2k counter also has an unplay effect. You can look up to one card from the top of your or your opponent's life cards and place it at the top or bottom of the life cards. Which is of course very strong because you get to play uh, your cards and you get to potentially set up your triggers at the bottom of your life for when you get at the late game and you need that extra bit of defense. Next card we have is gonna be Onami, and this is gonna be a money card. First, it's Nami, she's very popular. Second, she's a waifu, so of course this is gonna be this is gonna get pricey. And she's got a very cool alternate art. Everybody's gonna want that. Of course, they're gonna want that. And also her effect, uh, oh, honestly. That's one of the best effects that I've seen for OPO6. First off, you get a trigger. You can kill up to one of your opponent character with a cost of five or less if you get this from your life. So already, like, you get value. Not only that, but you get her main effect, which is an on-play, up to one of your leader or character cards gained banish during this turn. You play this with Yamato. Yamato already has double attack. You play this, you give Yamato banish, okay? Yamato with double attack banish, that's gonna be bonkers, guys. Of course, this is the MVP for yellow for OPO6. I'm calling it right now. Next, we have Kamakiri, which is a bit interesting for the Sky Island and Shandian Warrior, because you can activate main and place one stage with a cost of one at the uh, at the bottom of the owner's deck and kill up to one of your opponent's character with a cost of two or less. Also, you get a trigger. If you have two or less life cards, you can play this card. So you get the effect as well. And this card also has the same effect as Braham. They're, they're very similar. They're 3k. They're both 3 cost 4k power and they have like the same effect. Uh, this is just a rest and that the triggers are two or less life cards. And Kamakuri is a bit different. The trigger is the same, but you can KO uh, something in, instead of resting. But they are the same, and they are the first ever reliable stage killer that we get for the game. The previous one that we have was just one black card, and the, the stage removal was built into the trigger. So if you didn't have this from the trigger, you could not stage removal. This is now bringing stage removal into the game. And that is worth noting.
Also, we have Okiku uh, here, Kiku no Joe to be more precise. On KO, if your opponent has three or less life cards, you can add up to one card from the top of your deck to the top of your life cards. So you get life back. That's very cool. We know yellow needs that staying power. It's an on KO effect, of course, but with a power of 6k, of course, your opponent will not really want to let this sit on the board for that long. You also get a trigger that if your opponent has three or less life cards, you can play this card. So you get to play this for free on the board and then your opponent has to deal with this. We next have Iori, which is a very interesting card and also have a beautiful alternate art. And her effect is an on play. You may add one card from the top or bottom of your life cards to your hand and add up one card from your hand to the top of your life cards. So you can stack your life with whatever you want. Also, this card has a 2k counter. So really, it's perfect. It's an on play effect. So you get to have this effect no matter what. And you get to draw cards Place one in your life so you can life stack and a 2k counter. That's a plus in my book. Also, the alternate art is very beautiful. Next, we have her brother, of course, Momo, which is a blocker. And you can add one land of one character other than Momo himself to the top or bottom of the owner's life face up. Also have a very cool alternate art. You get the Akazaya 9 here. He's a support all around and a very beautiful dragon in the back. And it's again a very good life stack built into a blocker. So that's also very good. And I was talking about stage removal uh, right before. And we also have another one with Wiper. It's an unplay effect. You may place one stage with a cost of one at the bottom of the owner's deck. And look at the five cards from the top of your deck. Reveal up to one Upper Yard or Shendian Warrior type cards and add it to your hand. And then you can place the rest at the bottom of your deck in any order. So you have stage removal and searcher for Shandian built into the deck. Now we don't have that much Shandian, but it's starting to get uh, in the game with some of the cards that we've seen. Apis is Shandian, Kamakiri. Uh, you have Gembo here, which is a vanilla card. Uh, you also have Bram we talked about. We have uh, Raki here as well. So you get some Shandian warriors and you can... Totally go for an NL build that is now mixed between Sky Island and Shandian Warrior. And also, like I said before, these are the first real reliable stage removal that we have. Albeit they all target one cost stage, uh, not more. So it's kind of a bit of a bummer, but at least it's something. And if we look at the event, we have you're the one who should disappear. That's a counter. You may trash one card from your hands and up to one of your leader or character gains plus 3k power during this battle. You also have a trigger. You, If you have zero life cards, you may add up to one card from the top of your deck to the top of your life cards, then trash one card from your hand. So play this with NL and you basically double NL, the, the NL leader's effect. That's what I see uh, with this trigger. Also, the fact that it costs zero, but it's a count of 3k, that's kind of reminiscent of Bad Manor Kick Course, but you need to trash a card to, in order for this to activate. So be careful with that because you never know which cards you're going to need after. So choose carefully. We also have Repel and I really like the design of this card. Of course, I'm going to start with the trigger. That's a draw one card. If you get this in your life, that's perfect. You get draw power. And other than that, you have a choice, which is to KO one of your opponent's character with a cost of five or less. Or if your opponent has one life cards, you can deal one damage to your opponent. Then you can add one card from the top of your life cards to your hand. So that's the perfect NL killer because once NL has activated his power, you can, if you, if you get NL to zero life after that, it cannot activate anymore. Unless somehow he managed to get one life back, which we saw there's options for that, but you need to play this right. That's what I'm getting at. Also, if you choose the other one, it's a KO at five cost or less. That's very good as well. Whew, that was a lot. Uh, now that we've done all this, let's just appreciate the alternate art for the special rares. Buggy is very cool, in my opinion. I also like his effect. It's a red event searcher, so that's very cool. I like that alternate art. It is very nice. You can see like Buggy laughing maniacally here with a lot of treasure. It's very cool. I like this. Lin Lin, I think, is also an upgrade from her regular arts. I didn't like the regular 
the regular art or even the former alternate art for Lin Lin, uh, despite her effect being very meta and very useful in Big Mind deck, I didn't quite like it. So that's definitely an upgrade for me. Sugar Scars is very cute and I like this art as well as the former alternate art where she's got the eyes that twirls out of their socket, which is very hilarious. But this is a very cool alternate art and it's very useful as well. Sugar is very used in the Doflamingo deck and she's putting some work because she can rest something that your opponent is playing and so when you play against green you're never safe even in your turn you're never safe to play something that will stay active it might get rested straight away that's a very cool card that's a very cool addition missile sunday of course robin who won't like this alternate art it's it's gorgeous it's very interesting and i haven't seen her being used in purple decks uh, recently uh, but i think with the barrel quark type she can definitely bring back the Blurple Crocodile from OP01, which gets shut down way too soon because it just wasn't that good. But with draw power and ramping done like she could bring to that deck, I definitely think that we should revisit that deck sometimes in the future. Borsalino, I like the art, but I'm not that big of a fan of that particular card. Um, it's a bold removal, but it's kind of a weak one in my opinion because it's a four cost or less the black borsalino blocker uh, is more interesting to me but i didn't really took an interest in the navy type in op05 so i don't really know if this card is useful or not and the last special rare is rebecca of course the black rebecca it's a blocker and a non-play that you can Add up to one black character cards with a cost of 3 to 7 other than Rebecca from your trash to your hand. And play up to one black character with a cost of 3 from your hand rested. We know that card is very good and very used in black deck, especially for the black Luffy. So we know that card is meta and it's a popular character and that's two very big and solid arguments in favor of this card. Also, she's got used... <coughs> And those are pretty much all the cards from OP06. Yes, I left out the secrets, but the good news is if you want to know more about the secret rares Sanji and Zoro, you can check out this video next.